Today I want to take a look at how to query Azure Active Directory unattended by using certificate authentication. So here we're looking at some code to connect to a tenant and enumerate the users that we have on Azure Active Directory. We can load the Azure AD module and we can execute a connect command. And what this will do is an interactive prompt for us to log in. When the prompt appears, we can log in with one of our accounts that has read access on the tenant. And this allows us to go ahead and enumerate the users that are in the tenant. So we make a connection first. OK, cool. We go ahead and we execute get Azure AD user, and then we can format the results. Very good stuff. Let's us query Azure Active Directory, read users, email addresses, phone numbers, job titles, querying Azure Active Directory. Pretty straightforward when you're using an interactive when you're using an interactive pop-up. However, we really want to do this as unattended and have it automated through an app registration. And to register the app, have a certificate, use a certificate thumbprint, and authenticate with that certificate instead of the pop-up window. So if we go ahead and clear the console, what we'd really like to do is go through these steps in order to register our app and connect with a certificate. So two things to prepare that. The first prep step is going to be to navigate to Azure Active Directory and look at the app registrations we have. The app registration screen is something that we can find by typing app registration into the search bar and you'll see it come through here with the blue square icon just to make sure there's nothing registered already. The second step is to open the MMC console and press control N and control M to add a snap in. And here we can add certificates for the local computer account. And the local computer account, we'll look under personal, make sure that there's nothing there. Okay, we're ready to get started. What we're gonna do is go through a series of steps that create the certificate in our local uh, store, and then also apply it into Azure Active Directory. So we're going to go ahead and calculate a few dates. I have kind of a simple password, and that's plain text. We give it a domain name for the demo that we're running today. And then here we're going to make a new self-signed certificate with a thumbprint. That self-signed certificate is going to land in your local computer. And that's why we wanted to open the MMC snap-in. So executing the step for the new self-signed certificate will create a certificate into your local computer personal store. So we created the certificate locally, it's stored, we can use the thumbprint for reference. Now we need to go tell Azure about all of these things. So we've created a few variables and a local certificate. Here we convert the secure string, we export the certificate to a file path, and looking at the local folder, we see the PFX file that was created. We then load the certificate by doing a new object, x509, giving it the file path. And we have a key value with converting to base64. And this is the part we're going to hand over to Azure. So we've essentially created our certificate locally, and we've loaded the values into memory. Now we need to go hand all of that to Azure's app registration. So we're going to execute a step to make a new app registration with a display name and a domain. We're going to give it the credential and this is where we hand it the asymmetric 509 for the certificate right there, asymmetric 509, and also hand it the key value. And these will be the parts that we want to go ahead and employ as far as registering into the cloud. So we've executed that step. And we can even echo back dollar application to see what the value looks like. And here we can run the new credential statement. There it came back, echoing the certificate was found. And here we can create the service principal based on the app ID. And service principal lets us start granting permissions. So with SP service principal loaded, we can now go find the role ID for who are the directory readers. That's a very specific system role. We have a GUID number for it, and we add our service principal to the role. Now we can get the tenant detail. This is going to come back with a tenant ID number, 
and we can execute our connect command using the tenant ID, the app ID, and the thumbprint. Basically saying this is the tenant system I want, this is the app registration, who I am, and here's my thumbprint certificate to confirm. That thumbprint will then look up against your local certificate store to complete the authentication process. Now for thumbprints, you can always go to the details tab. It's the very last one here at the bottom. Pretty good stuff, easy enough to find by hand. Details tab, very last field is called thumbprint. That will give you the value if you ever need it for troubleshooting and support. So with all of these steps in place, if we go back over to Azure Active Directory and take a look, we will find that we have a new app registration created. It's app ID starting with 466. That should match to what we have over here on our console. And it does. We can see our app ID is right there, 466, with the display name. So we've created our app registration uh, for certificates it actually uploaded the one that was created locally. We created a self-signed certificate, uploaded it to the app registration, and you can do this differently. If you need to create your certificates from a trusted root certificate authority, all of those options are available as well. Under API permissions, one thing that we're gonna grant through the web browser that we need to do manually is an app permission for user.readall. So if we go ahead and do a little search here, come down to the user grouping. Yep, there it is. User.readAll. This will let us read all user profiles in the domain. So we're gonna say add permission, and we're gonna do the grant for the tenant button. That will grant admin consent for it. And this is an application permission to read all profiles. So we have our permission in place, one. We have our certificate in place, two. And we have the app ID of this registration, three. With all those things in place, we're in a good spot where we can go ahead and use them to connect. So we'll load up our variables. We'll execute our connect statement. Actually, I need to update the thumbprint. This was an old testing value. So there we go. Make sure we have the correct thumbprint that's matching. We go ahead and execute the connect statement. And this error relates to the app ID because I deleted it and recreated. So this is a fresh new app ID. And now I have all the variables updated. All right, so those error messages were related to me having old app ID and old thumbprint from an earlier test. But the error messages are good. We need that. That's how we learn. It's how we troubleshoot. So if we declare all three of those, those are our current values that we just now created. We execute our connect. We can do get Azure AD user and format the results as a table. So this unattended method lets us connect by using three simple strings, a GUID for the tenant, a GUID for the app, and the thumbprint of the certificate. These are things we can manually validate by going out to the app registration, taking a look at the certificates, taking a look at the API permissions that we've granted, and confirming that it is this app registration on this tenant that we're using for connection. If you're not sure about the thumbprint, again, you can always go to Certificate Manager. And if you guys aren't sure about Certificate Manager, it's, it's Start Run MMC. And then we do New. And we do Add. We select Certificates. And this is the important part, Computer Account. We want to make sure it's for the computer, not for the, the user. Go ahead and say Finish. And now you can come in here to see the Computer Accounts personal certificates, there it is. We go to the details and thumbprint is available at the bottom. So it's not that hard to get, it just takes a little getting used to. The biggest thing is to add the computer account when you come into uh, start run MMC for a blank console. That is the demo. Now we can successfully query Azure Active Directory in unattended mode. Thanks for watching.